Right, so we started a series at the beginning of the summer called Summer Road Trip, and the idea has been like this. Every week, we've gone somewhere new, and we have learned different life lessons in those, in those cities. We went to Eden, Garden of Eden. We went to Nineveh, okay, the big city of Nineveh with Jonah, all right? We went to Mount Sinai. We learned about Aaron, who didn't keep the standard this past uh, Sunday, we went to the wilderness with Jesus and talked about how he used the word of God uh, against the devil. OK, so tonight we're going to go to Jerusalem, but specifically in Jerusalem, we're going to go to the pool of Bethesda. How many of y'all gone swimming this summer? Anybody gone swimming this summer? A few? Awesome. Awesome. We're going to go to the pool of Bethesda. OK, you may think, what's so special about the pool of Bethesda? Well, Here's what's crazy about the Pool of Bethesda, okay? The Pool of Bethesda had like this magical healing power. Basically what happened was an angel would come down, stir the waters, and when he would ascend, there would be so many people crowded around this pool that they would like rush, okay? Like people on Black Friday like rush into the deals. Like these people were rushing, knocking people over, throwing bows, trying to get to this pool because those who were sick, they, they were lame. They had, they had serious diseases. When they touched the pool, they were completely, cu- they were completely healed. Okay? And we're going to talk, talk about an encounter and a transformation that happened at the pool of Bethesda today. Okay? Let's read in the Bible what we're going to talk about. All right? John chapter 5. Write this down. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. 1 through 9, I'm sorry. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, okay? They're going to be on the screen for y'all, all right? Here it is. It says, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Now, on these five covered porches, it would be full of, of what we're about to read. It would be full of crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed lay on the porches it's like going to a hospital this is what imagine for a second going into a hospital if you ever been to the emergency room you, if you ever walked in the emergency room there's people who are sick people in wheelchairs all kinds of all kinds of things going on in the ER okay think of that think of that visual at this moment they're all outside on the porch sick lame paralyzed you know, diseased people who are sitting around the pool of Bethesda on these five porches, okay? Now, verse 4, uh, 5 says, verse 4 says this, I'm sorry, wait, 3, okay. So, some of the men lying there had been, oh, I'm sorry, let, you know, let me go back to read verse 2, and I'll go on. It says, inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. Now, check this out. This is what we're going to talk about today. One of the men had been lying there sick for, check this out, 38 years. Last Wednesday, I celebrated my 38th birthday. I cannot imagine dealing with a sickness for as long as I've been living. 38 years. That's a long time. He has been dealing with this issue in his life. 38. Just picture that. Some of y'all ain't even close to being 38 years old. You ain't even halfway there yet. 38 years. Okay? 38 years. That's, that's crazy. Crazy he's been dealing with this. Okay? So this guy has been there for 38 years. Okay? Now, I love this part. Verse 6 says, it says, when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? <laughs> if you've been sick for 38 years, if you were dealing with something and someone came up to you and said, hey, you want to get well? You'd be like, uh, yeah, you would think, right? But check this out. Verse 7, the man says this. He says, I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. And Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And the Bible says, instantly, when Jesus spoke that, 
the man was healed. All right. He was healed and he rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. Now, here's the thing. Let's picture this for a second. We have just talked about the pool. It's like a it's like an ER scene, right? You got these five porches. and There's people who are sick, lame, paralyzed, diseased. They're all around this pool waiting for the pool to bubble up so that they can rush and get their healing. Right now, check this out. All eyes are on the pool. OK, all eyes are on the pool. Right. Check this out. Jesus walks on the scene. Right now, we know who Jesus is. Savior of the world, God in human flesh. That's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. Okay, that's who Jesus is, right? He's Emmanuel, God with us. Okay, this Jesus walks into this area and nobody even recognizes him. That's crazy, right? Not one person even notices Jesus. He walks in. See, what they don't understand is the healer is in their midst. But they're so focused on the pool that they've missed the healer right in front of them. They don't even need to go to the pool if they would put their eyes on Jesus. Okay? Put their eyes on Jesus. Which brings us, to, we're going to talk about three quick things that we can learn from this story. And the first one is this. The man who was lying on one of the porches. He was lying on the porch. He'd been there for 38 years. I can only imagine the mental battle he faced every single day. For 38 years, he'd been laying there. When Jesus walks up, nobody notices him. But here's the first thing that we can learn today, okay? Wherever you're lying today, Jesus sees you even when you don't see him. Oh, I love that. I love that because here's the thing. With Jesus, he walked in and nobody was even looking for him. Nobody gave him no attention. But yet he could still see everybody specifically this one man who had been laying here for 38 years i love that man i love that because when we're not looking for jesus when we don't want nothing to do with jesus when we're so fixed and focused on all these other distractions in life the bible shows us that jesus is not is not blind to us he sees us even when we don't want to see him okay he sees us even when we don't want we don't want to see him you know one of the many things i love about jesus one of the many things I love about Jesus is when Jesus would visit a city. Here's what I love about Jesus. Most people, when they visit somewhere, they want to go to the big, grand places, right? So, like, specifically in Jesus' time, people would have wanted to go to the palaces, see these big old places, right? Go to those places because there was a lot of people there. You want to love about Jesus? Anytime he went to a new city, Jesus wasn't going to the palaces. You want to know where he was going? to the hospitals you gotta love that about Jesus Jesus was passionate about seeing people be healed of their sicknesses disease if they were paralyzed he was passionate about that see Jesus wasn't looking for the spotlight he was just trying to serve mankind he was trying to serve people because listen even when nobody was looking for them for him he saw everybody and specifically in this situation, this man who had been lying there for 38 years. Which brings us to the second thing we can learn tonight, okay, from this story. Wherever you're lying today, just like this man, Jesus knows how long you've been there and been dealing with stuff. Whew. Wherever you're lying today, I want you to know something. Jesus knows how long you've been there and how long you've been dealing with stuff. Any y'all ever dealt with something that... You feel like you've been dealing with for a long time. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's a mental problem. Maybe it's a school problem. Whatever it is. Maybe you've been a parent problem, a, a brother problem, a sister problem, whatever it is. You've been dealing with this one situation for so long. And you feel like nobody sees you. Nobody cares. But I got news for y'all today. I got news for you. I want you to know that Jesus sees you. And he knows how long you've been there and how long you've been dealing with it. All right. I'll never forget. There was this one time <laughs> my my um, my father has a lawn mowing business on the side. He does it as a side hustle. Right. And one day uh, he was like, hey, Carrie, can you load up the truck so we can get it ready to go? I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. Pop. So I go outside and I'm loading up stuff. And and, you know, the, the mowers are good enough for you can lift them on your own, basically. Well, we, there's this one 
uh, mower equipment. It's called, they call it a reel. It's used for like golf course type of grass. And it's a little bit heavier than a regular mower, okay? And I'll never forget, I went to pick it up and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is heavier than I thought. I probably should have waited uh, because my father was like, hey, just wait. I'll help you lift the reel up. But I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. I got this. And I was like, oh my, I finally got it after struggling for like a minute, no joke. Got it on the, tr- got it on the back of the truck, pushed it in, put the lock on, and we were good to go. When I went back inside, my brother was like, I see you got the reel up there. Good job. And I was just like, wait a minute. Time out one second, bro. I said, how do you know? He's like, oh, I was watching you through the window the whole time. I said, bro, I said, this whole time you were watching me and you didn't even offer to help? He's like, no, nah, I knew you had it. I was like, you scrub. You saw me dealing with this. You saw me dealing with this problem, this beast of a mower. And you chose to sit in this kitchen the whole time and not even lend a helping hand. Yeah, basically. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I think sometimes in life, no, not that I think. I know in times in life we feel like that situation. We have all these things coming against us. We, maybe we've been dealing with things for far too long. And I want you to know something. Jesus knows how long you've been laying there and dealing with that problem. Maybe, you're, maybe, maybe whatever it is, maybe, let's be honest, maybe you have a problem with looking at inappropriate pictures and videos on the internet. Maybe you have a problem with cussing. Maybe you have a problem with stealing. Maybe you have a problem with talking back to mom and dad. Listen, I want you to know something. Okay, wherever you're lying, Jesus sees it. He knows how long you've been there and how long you've been dealing with it. Okay, he knows that. All right, just like he saw with this man who had been laying there for 38 years. All right. Which brings us to the third and final thing we can learn from tonight, all right? Wherever you're lying today, just like this man, I want you to know something. This is the greatest news of all. Jesus does want you well. You know that thing that you've been battling for so long? Jesus wants you well from it. He wants you healed of it. He doesn't want you to carry it. If it's depression, anxiety, Jesus doesn't want you to carry that. If it's mental health issues, Jesus doesn't want you to carry that. Listen, if you deal with uh, pornography issues, uh cussing talking back to mom and dad listen those are things that listen jesus wants you well from you don't have to live with that no more okay now here's the thing here's the thing with this situation two things stick out to me about this story the first one was the man didn't even answer jesus when jesus approached him if you remember jesus walked up to him and said hey do you want to get well the man didn't even answer jesus yes or no he just said I can't. I can't. Okay? And the second thing that I love about that is that the man didn't even ask Jesus for help. And yet Jesus healed him anyway. You know what I love about Jesus is that sometimes when we're not even looking for him, we're not even looking for his help, we're not even seeking for him to help us out, he just does it anyway. And with this situation, that's exactly what happened. The man didn't even acknowledge uh, that Jesus could help him. He didn't even ask Jesus for help. He was just, he just was like, look, I've been here 38 years. I'm never going to make it to the pool because here's the thing. He didn't realize who was in front of him. He was so focused on this thing called the pool of Bethesda to get him healthy and whole without even realizing that the person who could do it was standing right in front of him. Okay. Here's the thing that I've learned from that situation in the Bible. The reality is this, and maybe you, maybe you know people like this. Some people, in all honesty, some people just want to be sick. They want to deal with their problems. They want to carry those problems. They don't want help. They don't want to be free from it. They don't want, maybe you know people like this. Maybe you have family members or friends like this. No matter how much you pray for them or talk to them, in a sense, um, they just, they would choose to be like this man and just lay there for 38 years and be like, yeah, I, I, there's no hope for me. Like, uh, every time I try, it just doesn't work out. And it's sad because here's the thing. God never wanted that for us. That's why he sent us Jesus. Okay. That's why he sent us Jesus. All right. Now here's what I love. Jesus is offering this man a gift. Okay. And all he has to do is receive it. He says, do you want to be well? Okay, he's offering him a gift. And here's what I had love is that after the man doesn't even acknowledge it, Jesus just looks at him and says, get up, take your mat and go. And here's what I love is that the minute those words 
left Jesus' mouth. The minute those, we're talking about the same voice that spoke and the heavens and earth were created. We're talking about the same voice that when he spoke, light was, light was visible. Light happened. We're talking about the same God when he spoke, the earth and the waters were formed. That's the same voice that spoke to this man who had been lying there for 38 years. Get up, take your mat, and go. You know what I love? It says, instantly, the man stood up. Can you imagine? For 38 years, he'd probably been laying there. 38 years. And for the first time, he stands up. He picks up his mat, and he goes. And he goes. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay? I love that. Now listen, what did the man do? Did he get in the pool? Nah. Here's the thing. Jesus gave him healing in his body, and all he had to do was receive it. Okay? Now, this is so important, okay? Fast forward to John chapter 5, verse 14. Okay? John chapter 5, verse 14. The Bible says this. It says, a little later... Jesus found him in the temple, okay? A few verses later, the Bible says that Jesus catches up with the man because people see the man and they see that he's whole and they're like, what in the world? And the, Jesus sees him, okay? He catches him in the temple and he looks at him and he says, you look wonderful and you're well. Here, and here's, what, here's what's so important. He said, don't return to a sinning life or something worse might happen. John 5 15 says the man went back and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well listen the reason why Jesus told this man this listen don't go back or something worse might happen don't go back to sinning because something worse might happen early church historians believe and say that the reason Jesus said this to this specific man was because 38 years ago he did something sinful that caused him to get in this situation. Who knows what it was? We don't know. But because of his actions that were against what God's word says, he found himself in this situation. And so Jesus has healed him and made him well, right? And he says, listen, don't go back to sinning now that you're well. Don't go back to that lifestyle. You're whole. You're clean. Don't go back to that. Or because if you do, something much worse will happen to you. All right? Something much worse will happen to you. And here's what I love. We'll finish with this. Jesus says, go, right? And here's what I love. The man, after he's been healed, he goes back to his people and he begins to tell everybody, hey, you want to know why I'm like this? It's because of Jesus. So here's the thing. Jesus sees us when we don't see him. Jesus sees how long we've been dealing with stuff. And Jesus wants us well. Because here's the thing. He also wants your friends, your family members well too. And it's our responsibility to tell others about who Jesus is. How he comes to save the lost. How he comes to heal the sick. And how he delivers us all from sin. Alright? Now... I'll close with this. Here's what I love. Jesus didn't need no pool. <laughs> he didn't need no magical water. And the reason is because Jesus has complete authority over the natural. He has complete authority over death, sickness, blindness, the seas, and even demons. We see this in the New Testament all the time. When Jesus would speak to the winds and the waves and they would calm down. When he would tell demons to leave people, they would flee. When people were sick, he would heal them on the spot. When people were, uh, couldn't walk or they were blind, they would be healed of, their, of, their, of, their, of what it is that they were going through. Okay? Jesus has the final authority over all things. So listen, I just want to encourage you today. Maybe you find yourself, or here's the thing, maybe you don't find yourself, but you know somebody who's like this man been dealing with something for so long like I said it could be a family member it could be a friend okay this man had been there for 38 years and even though he wasn't looking for Jesus Jesus still saw him all right and here's the thing he saw how long he had been there listen Jesus sees your family members who deal with stuff he sees the things that you deal with when no one else sees it okay 
All right? Because here's the reason why. He does really want us well. All right? He does really want us well. I would encourage us all here tonight to look to Jesus instead of looking to other things to make us well. When you have friends at school or family members who are dealing with things and they're trying to find comfort and hope and all these other things, say, hey, listen, I know someone who can give you the greatest hope of all, who can, who can, who can come into your life and transform you from the inside out. Jesus, just like with this man. All right? Just like with this man. Man, I encourage y'all, share that with somebody. Especially since you're about to go back to school, man, be bold with that message. Don't, don't be intimidated to share who Jesus is with your friends. Let them know, hey, I live for Jesus, and you know what? Jesus loves you. He's for you. All right? Let's pray.